Hi everyone, I'm Kelly from Eastern Canine and just now I'm going to put together a video for you on how to crate train your dogs. I'm sure if you're here already you know the numerous benefits for crate training so I'm not, because I want to try and keep this video kind of short, I'm not going to go over all the benefits. If you do want to know some of those benefits though, please feel free to send me a message and I will send those right through to you because I use crates with my dogs. I don't say they're 100% essential to use, but I do highly recommend them and they definitely come in handy. The first thing that I want to go over is the sizing for the crates. You want it to be uh, large enough that they can stand up and turn around, but if it's too big, it's kind of defeating the purpose. You want it to be a nice kind of den, like small, cozy area. But in saying that, you want them to stand up, turn around, and be able to lay down and stretch out a little bit so it is comfortable for them. It's especially important with puppies that it's not too big because otherwise, for as far as toilet training goes, they can just go straight to a corner at the other end of a very large crate, uh, go pee there, and then go back to sleep in their other corner. And there, they've just learned to pee in their crate big enough to stand up and turn around but not too big that they can run amok in there. So if you do have a puppy and, you know, for example, a question I get asked a lot is, hey, you bought a mixed breed puppy, look, by judging by the size of those paws, could be a pretty big dog. So for those people, you can actually get a much bigger crate, but buy a divider to go in it so that you can adjust the size to make it smaller. Obviously, it's going to be super tall, but we're not worried about how tall it is. Um, and then you can make it bigger and bigger as they grow until they eventually completely fill it up. There are a few types of crates that you can use. So uh, there's wire ones which are collapsible, soft ones, and then there's the plastic ones which you know can be either airline approved or not airline approved. So everyone has their preference, each has their advantages and disadvantages. Your wire ones you can collapse, which is great. Um, I use them a lot when I used to go camping or take my dogs on trips with me. That way it's not taking up the whole car like a plastic one would. Um, but the benefits of the plastic ones obviously is you've got, it's nice and secure and they're quite strong as well. So a lot harder for dogs to break out of. But I have seen wire ones for those dogs that like to escape putting zip ties around the corners. Um, it seems to hold some dogs in pretty well. As far as the soft ones, they are good for uh, you know, maybe older dogs or dogs that are not likely to escape. Um, otherwise, they are pretty easy for a dog to scratch out of. Next thing is the best spot in the house to put the crate. So I suggest a, a somewhat busier part of the house where there are going to be people around more often than not, at least to begin with. So such as the living room. Um, that way, you know, they're not feeling completely isolated because, again, dogs are pack animals and we don't want to, you know, put them in the crate, maybe in the laundry or something like that. Uh, some people, you know, at night time will put the crate in the rooms or whatever, but that is completely personal choice up to you. And I would feed them every single meal in there, so that's going to speed up the process as well that they get accustomed to it give them all their treats in there, so you know, long lasting things, maybe they get bones or dental chews or something like that, give those to them in there, you can put some um, toys and stuff in there if you want to, to just, you know, especially in the beginning to really get them nicely accustomed to it. 